Many graphic options have been improved in RGSS 11 and some have been changed. For example, the line descriptor. The line descriptor has been discontinued and merged into a polyline descriptor, as there are really very few technical differences between a line and a polyline. A polyline is just a line with many waypoints, called vertices. When you convert a configuration to RGSS 11, all line descriptors will automatically be converted to polyline descriptors. When you create a line or polyline, you can adjust the lines as you like, or press the control button while pressing the left mouse button to enable a 15 degree line snap. Pressing the end or enter key or left clicking with the mouse will stop adding vertices to the line and you can create or delete vertices as usual by right clicking a vertex and selecting the relevant option. You can define a start and an end style for the line if you like. There are nine predefined start styles and nine predefined end styles. And these are important if you are creating intersecting lines or pipes, or if you are creating lines or pipes that run over or under each other. You can also define whether to scale the line descriptor when the diagram is resized. You can define the draw mode of the line, selecting how the line is depicted in the diagram, and you can define how corners are displayed. In some cases, you will want rounded corners, and in other cases, sharper corners are desired. A special variant of the power polyline descriptor has been introduced called the pipe. Pipes are polyline descriptors with a set of predefined properties that make the drawing and rendering of pipes in the diagram a lot easier. Previously, if you wanted to draw pipes, you would use animated symbols, selecting the ones you needed and dragging each one into the diagram. This could cause some major headaches when the diagram is resized, as the animated symbols risk drifting apart by one or two pixels as IGSS attempted to render the animated symbols according to the new diagram sizes and resolutions. We do not recommend using animated symbols to draw pipes anymore, although they will not be removed for backwards compatibility reasons. Instead, we recommend you use the pipe descriptor. Since the pipe descriptor is a polyline, you can create corners and bend the pipe without having to recreate corner piping. Resizing the pipe is also easier. You can create intersections by using the start or end cap styles in the intersecting pipes. You can experiment with which styles fit your plant and pipe structures. Another new feature in IGSS 11 is the option to lock a descriptor. This will prevent an operator or system designer from selecting it. A locked descriptor will still be visible in the diagram and can still change to reflect connected object status, but cannot be selected. To lock a descriptor, you must right-click the descriptor or collection of descriptors and select Lock, or you can click Edit Lock. Now you can't select the lock descriptors, even with the Select All command, or the Control a hotkey. This helps you protect the placement of certain key descriptors in the diagram, so you won't select or maybe move them by mistake. You can unlock the descriptor in two ways. You can unlock all descriptors in the diagram by clicking Diagram Unlock All. Or, you can unlock specific descriptors by using the Property Table Viewer. In the property table viewer in the, in the descriptors folder, locate the descriptor and change the value in the locked cell. Sometimes the descriptor name can be difficult to find, especially since descriptors are automatically named by the system. In this case, I know that my pipes are the only pipes in the diagram, and that a pipe is a polyline descriptor with the draw mode of pipe, making it easier to find. I can now select and adjust my locked pipes. We have introduced transparency properties for some descriptors in IGSS 11, for example images. 
This image is taken from the demo configuration, but the background has been made transparent in another program. You can, for example, use Photoshop or GIMP to do this. This is the original image. And as you can see, the transparent image blends better with the diagram background. You must, however, remember to enable transparency for the image in the image properties. In this case, the transparency called alpha blending has been disabled. You can also add images, even transparent images, to button controls. You can place the image in the button using the image position options. You can also pad the image, in other words, offsetting the image by a number of pixels from the image placement. You should be careful, you can offset the image right out of the button. You can also do the same for the button text. This is called the button caption in other programs. You can even combine the button text and the button image, placing the text on top of, under, or over an image. You can position the button text by using the X and Y alignment options. Left, right, center. Top, bottom, center. And you can also pad the button text, offsetting the button text by a number of pixels. Like images, you can offset a text out of the button, so you must be careful here as well. Transparency has also been implemented for rectangular fields, which are mainly used to create an area with clickable links in a diagram. Transparency is rendered with gray diagonals in the definition module only, in order to help system designers place and resize their rectangular fields. You can also clear the transparency checkbox and select a background color for the field instead. Note that transparency will not be rendered with gray diagonals in the supervised module. The animated symbols have also been improved in IGSS 11. You can set an animated symbol to display alarms either as a state or in the background. Here, two pump animated symbols have been connected to the same P1 object. The symbols display the alarms in two different ways, one as a state and the other as a background. If you choose to depict alarms as a state, the alarm state will be displayed instead of the object state. This means the object state cannot be seen as only the alarm state will be displayed. If you choose to depict alarms in the background, the animated symbol will still display the object state when the object is in alarm, and instead the background will be displayed with whatever properties have been defined for the alarm. IGSS 11 has introduced a new way of scaling configurations when opening them in the definition module. Previously, the system attempted to automatically scale a configuration that was loaded, sometimes with very frustrating results. Now, the system designer will receive a prompt box, informing the designer of a scaling conflict and requesting input about what the designer wants to do with the configuration. If the resolution of the configuration is different from the present screen resolution, the system designer will be prompted to either close the configuration or rescale it, depending on the situation. If the configuration is smaller than the screen, 
the system designer can load the configuration in its original size, keeping the scale while working, or get the system to automatically scale the configuration up. If the configuration resolution is larger than the screen, the system designer only has the option to scale the configuration down, decreasing the placement and size of all scalable elements such as descriptors, diagrams, and graphs. In all cases, the system designer can elect to back out and not load the, the configuration at all.